Hi folks, before we get started, we'd like to take a moment to let you know some of the content on this podcast may not be suitable for some audiences. It's all in good fun, but we just wanted to let you know. Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. Uh, Kim Cattrall, uh, who played the slut on Sex and the City. <laughs> she played the whore. Uh, I have a connection with her. Kim Cattrall. She played Samantha. Uh, I once walked by her on the street in Toronto. <laughs> Did you say anything to her? No. Like, How did hey, she look? Good, good. That was like 10 years ago, so yeah. And uh, were you like, hey, I'm dead. I'm on uh, TSN. Uh, you also a slut in real life? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, that's that. Uh, that's that. Uh, Tatiana Malazny, Star of Orphan Black. She was, we put her on the wall last week. Yeah. She won the Emmy for Best Actress. In yeah. The drama. So she we, won. We did it. We f***ing did yes. it. Yes. Right. We, we f***ing did, did, we did it. We crushed it for her. Yep. So looks like uh, she got the old Jane Dan podcast bump. Oh, yeah. Would you rather have sex with a goat and nobody knows? Or don't have sex with a goat, but everyone thinks that you did? Goat. goat. <laughs> Damn, that's, that's a horse. I'm going <laughs> to. That's a horse goat hybrid. Uh, KB, forget about us? No, she's, no, she's here. here. She's here. Oh, here. Karen, Karen. Karen. Yeah. 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 GSP oh. uh, for the Toronto event in December. Yes. Is this, is this a lot? Give me the guarantee. Is it coming back? I would say it's like 75% That's probably. pretty good. good. But uh, Angie asked me uh, when she was doing Tomb Raider, she asked me to help her pick out the uh, movie posters for that. What? Oh, yeah? Well, yeah, that was a lot pretty of fun. Wild. Yeah. That's pretty wild. I yeah. like that. It was cool. Was she hacking darts all day? Is she crushing darts? Uh, not all day, but she she had a few darts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not all day. <laughs> Just part of the day. You're listening to the Jay and Dan podcast. Dance. Yeah, this is uh, a different version of the Jay and Dan podcast. Uh, um, first of all, what episode is this, Ben? 127. Oh, good job. 127. I'm, sorry, I'm Dan. I'm not Ben. Yeah, ben not... doesn't have a mic because we're in our TV studio for this podcast. Yeah, we're switching it up because we had a very special guest, Canadian, uh, on the Wall of Fame. Is, he, is Norm already on the Wall of Fame? Norm McDonald. Okay, he's on the Wall of Fame now. Yeah, we're going to put him on the Wall of Fame this week as, if he isn't because Norm McDonald is our guest on this podcast. First of all, very quickly, we must mention that he has written a memoir called Based on a True Story, a memoir that is out now in your bookstores. Go check that out. If you're watching the video portion here. There, oh. There's a copy. That's a there poorly. Go. There it is. There's a copy right there. Uh, it's called Based on a True Story Memoir. I just finished reading it. Dan, it is absolutely hilarious. You're going to crush it in one night of reading. I laughed uh, for uh, the, the first page. He dedicated it to Charles Manson. Then he, uh, then he put, not that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a oh Norm. So, uh, so that's why we're doing it a little differently uh, today. Now, but before we get into the interview with Norm, Dan, uh, you went to Vegas this weekend and maybe one of the most shocking developments in human history. <laughs> uh, you went with Gerard D., Jerry yeah. D. Oh, what a guy. Yeah. That guy makes me laugh. What a wild time that must have been. We watched uh, Canada beat Russia together. It was very exciting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I lent Jerry a shirt to wear. Okay. This sounds like a terribly boring <laughs> weekend in Vegas. <laughs> Well, we don't play the same gambling games. What so. is Jerry? What uh, games of chance does Jerry prefer? He uh, played some uh, Pi Gal. He plays blackjack. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I thought he would play poker, but no. He's a... Oh, yeah, because he's like the big poker spokesperson. The, my, he's my... the poker stars guy. Yeah, my favorite moment um, from the weekend was uh, we were walking around and we do these speaking gigs, you and I together. And I tell like three stupid jokes. It's the same jokes in every one. <laughs> so I started telling the jokes. He goes, really? I'm a comedian. <laughs> really? You're... And then he, goes, he wasn't impressed with then, your uh, pan with your see-through pants and, joke? And then he started going like, well, how would you like it? Hey, Jose Bautista, big home run last night. <laughs> Blue Jays win. <laughs> so I'm like... So I just wanted to get your opinion on the Yeah, goals. you're just trying to crowdsource them a little bit. Uh, but he probably gets tired of that. People go, hey, Jerry, you're a comedian. What do you think of this joke? <laughs> I'll put this in your act. Oh, yeah, he gets uh, pitches, I'm sure, all the time. So uh, was Jerry playing uh, Celine Dion's Coliseum at Caesars? 
No. Um, he just, uh, he was in town. He's in L.A. for the week. And he said, you want to go to Vegas? I said, sure. How much fun is that? Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the funniest guys. We still talk about that. Uh, the first event we ever saw him at was a sportsman dinner in Nova Scotia. Yes. And he says that's one of the best stand-up gigs he ever did. Wow. Well, that was the first one I ever saw him do. And we I were in tears. I was blown away. Uh, he and, threw out his material and just did it all on Walter Gretzky. Yeah, very. just to recap, it was like Walter, Roberto Alomar, Anthony Calvillo, Jeremy Roenick. Who am I missing? I think that was it. That and was then it. and then Walter. And we were hosting, and then Jerry was the headliner. Jer Jer no, Jerry was second. Uh, Jeremy oh, yeah, Roenick right. was the headliner. So poor Jeremy. So we all go. Well, Dan and I are just hosting. It's like Walter first, then Anthony Calvillo. They both do great. Um... Then Alomar goes up, does great. Jeremy goes up, or sorry, then then uh, Jerry D goes up and carves up everyone that went before him. Carves up Walter Gretzky for oh. doing nothing more than turning on a hose. <laughs> carves up Alomar, carves up Calvio in a loving and hilarious way. Yes. But kills, like the whole place is dying laughing, including us. Get, carves us up completely. And then... Poor Jeremy had to follow it. Jeremy had not a single note. He had no material, no stories prepared. I don't know what he was thinking. He just showed up thinking, well, my charisma. And then, then we saw him at the bar after, and didn't you say, like, great job? I, I didn't know what else to say. I was like, good job. He's like, he knew. <laughs> he knew he had failed. We were, so we were going down to dinner in the elevator, Jerry and I, and he goes, you remember that uh, gig in Nova Scotia? I'm like, yeah, he goes, Remember when you guys put bags on your head? <laughs> you remembered that. And he goes, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> I go, well, we've. I, I completely forgot. I said that yeah, was my idea. I said we've never done that again. No, no, that was. I my... said we've gotten a much better. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was actually uh, pretty funny. Wow, we yeah. had a good time that night. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I uh, somewhere in my travels, my phone uh, fell out of my pocket. Yeah, so again, we just quickly need to touch on this. You went to Tao, uh, which is like a nightclub slash restaurant. First yep. of all, how did you like the food there? Pretty good. Uh, I just ate a bunch of appies and stuff. Okay, it doesn't sound like it was too memorable for you. <laughs> no. But then. Because again, when I'm in Vegas, I'm like the entire time, I'm like, oh, hey, got to get back are, to the table. The tables are right here. Gamble grumblies <laughs> in the tummy. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, no, I understand that. And then, but then the problem is you're there, you're wearing. Pants that don't have pockets or have tiny pockets? Or they something? have small pockets. And my children can attest to this because I once took uh, uh, a vehicle from the airport to our house here. And when I got out, we're walking in. I'm like, my phone's gone. It fell out of my pocket in the van. Like, so you think it happens to you once. You're like, well, never wearing those short, short pocket pants again. <laughs> SPPs. But again, I like them. I really like those jeans. But there's other jeans. They're jeans? There's a million jeans. But when you find a good pair. Where are they from? Like Dick's Sporting Goods? Where are they from? Uh, yeah. Uh, I got them at uh, Denver Hayes. Is that, is that still open? I don't know. It's a Canadian clothing men's retailer. You got them at Susie Cream Cheese. <laughs> Susie. There was actually a store in Canada, a women's clothing store called Susie Cream Cheese. <laughs> so I told Sonia, who's our production manager, I said, yeah, can you order me a new phone? And she just said, again? How, yeah, like how many times have you asked Sonia paying you? Well, the other time I fell in a pool. <laughs> like this is somehow justified. <laughs> you what, lost your wallet? wallet? I didn't lose my wallet. You left it in Vegas. You left your I wallet I left my Vegas. wallet in Vegas. I, I did not leave anything else in Vegas. I remembered everything. So you left, your, you left your wallet. You lost your phone twice. Or you got one phone destroyed. You left one phone in Tao after dancing on the tables or something. So then I spent all day trying to get a hold of Jerry because he had left. And so finally he called my room at 5 in the afternoon and our plane left at 7. Jerry, I got no phone. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. Oh, so what do you mean, what do you, mean you heard? Because his buddies were there. His buddies oh, were there. okay. Right. Yeah, so. Gerard D. Mr. D. They got to be on season 6 now? Showed me a clip. It's got over a million views of, uh, look it up, uh, Jerry D. Uh, crack whore. Okay, but wait a minute. If Jerry, if you're asking Jerry what he thinks of jokes, 
What's the difference of he showing you clips of his own job? Because I asked how the season was going. Oh, because I used to. You asked that. I always catch up on Air Canada flights. Right. You can always see episodes of Mr. D on Air. And I wish we were filming when he was trying to show me this clip. The Wi-Fi was really bad in the hotel. So I was following him around his room. He's like, here, stand over here. And then it would play for a second and stop. He's like, okay, let's try it in here. So at one point, we were in the bathroom. So like, and then what happened? We eventually got the clip going. How weird would it be if you guys were in the bathroom together and then all of a sudden Jerry was just like, oh, Dan, should we make out? Okay. So it was a great Vegas trip. <laughs> I have no need to go back for months yeah right you'll be back there next week no be gone next no. week it was a bloodbath Ooh, not so good here's your problem and i know i'm speak. i'm telling you something you already know every weekend you come back from vegas i say how'd you do and your answer is exactly the same every time <laughs> uh well i was way up at one point yep you always say that i was way up oh, at yeah. one point. i was doing great and then i lost it all so one of these weekends what you should do <laughs> is you, when you get way up, you just walk away. You I did walk, walk away, away, but then I'm like, I want to get more up. Yeah, yeah, that's a classic gambling addiction move. <laughs> oh, the, the craps tail, the, the chip thing was full. On the, I started a second row of chips. Second row, and then that row became not even <laughs> one row. <laughs> right. Where Were you playing at the Venetian? Yep. Uh, Great facility. Yeah. Uh, and... Um, Met a guy who was uh, Jerry's host, because uh, they like him there, and he was from Mississauga. So uh, we got to Canadian content at the Venetian. Has Jerry ever played the Venetian? Like, performed at it? Is there a comedy club there? No. No. The only comedy club I know of in Vegas is that Brad Garrett. There's a few. I think there's a, isn't there like a Catch a Rising Star or something like that? There's a few clubs. There's one in the MGM. I know that. I've been to that one. That one was good. Hmm. I like a good comedy club, unless it's Jerry D performing. Then I will not go. <laughs> Speaking of comedy, uh, man, this interview with Norm Macdonald you're about to hear, it jam-packed with laughs. The room was uh, in stitches. He's so funny and has such a fascinating take on the world. His book is not, I encourage you to read it. It's so funny, so strange. It's not like your normal celebrity memoir where he tells, you know, stories about people he's met. I mean, he does a bit of that, but it's really a fictional story that wraps some truths about his life into it. It's like a fear and loathing in Las Vegas, but Norm Macdonald. We really needed an hour. We never once talked about SNL. No. We didn't get to talk about his final Letterman appearance. We didn't talk about the Norm show, which I thought was great. We didn't talk about dirty work. His but what we did talk about, and we aren't even kidding, the CFL and Canadian Parliament. We talked about question period. That was a major subject of the upcoming <laughs> interview you're about to hear, question period. So uh, I don't, let's fire it up. What do you think? Are we going to fire it up? Yeah. Okay, let's hit play on that, and then we'll uh, come back and wrap her up. We'll wrap it up afterwards. So enjoy our chat with Norm McDonald. Hi, Norm! Yeah. Norm! We did it! Norm. We did it! Yeah, we did it. Yeah. 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 Nice to finally meet you. Hi, Norm. Nice to meet you, right, finally. Right here, here Come, Come have a seat. In. This is Bobby. You're right, you're in the comfy chair. Yeah, we're gonna give you the comfier chair. Which is that? That's that one. There. With the oh, FS1 good. pillow, you can take that. No, really? Oh yeah. <laughs> you can take the pillow? Take it. If you want it. Sure. You think, you think we're keeping any of this? We're gonna burn this down. I, I you know, in the, yeah, I always thought I should have stolen stuff from SNL. Yeah. You, you know, I took no pictures. I wrote Nothing? this book, and they're like, hey, you got any pictures? I go, I got nothing, because it was before you you could take pictures with your with phone. phone. So you would have to have a camera. Yeah, like an actual, actual camera. camera. Yeah. And then go get it developed at, like, exactly. the, the CVS. Yes. Yeah, and the guy takes it through a curtain, some Asian guy. And yeah, yeah. You're like, he when, develops when, it. When does that come back? It's like, uh, It'll yeah. be back in a week. But it was exciting, though, yeah. back then. Um, you know? we have, you'd come back. <laughs> if you're interested... We we figured you might be interested <laughs> oh, yeah. in this, especially this one. I mean, that's comedy, uh, but this is also, uh, that's a little songs. piece of our history there. Yes, sir. Well, Snowbird, she starts with, which is the only song I know. And then Why the last Anne song. Why does Ann Murray not have a residency in Vegas? Yes, she not right? She should Maybe be able Fremont? to be right. Or even, uh, <laughs> Fremont. <laughs> <laughs> but even, uh, what's that place, uh, the other people do it? Oh. Uh, that town? 
my oh, oh uh, Br- Branson. Yeah, Missouri. Branson. Yeah, right. Ed Murray. Yeah. Ed Murray must have a following. Yeah, uh, she would be good there. Um, you know, Gordon Lightfoot is just. He's hanging on by a thread. That's for sure. Yeah, he uh, he still does his Massey Hall thing. Every yeah, day, yeah. And I don't think it's, I think no. it's a little shaky now. <laughs> <laughs> but what a writer that guy was. You know, oh, yeah. when I first heard that uh, wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, I thought it was from 1700. Right. That, <laughs> it turned out it was from, like, from 1975. I'm like, what? I know. Exactly. But the lines in that song uh, are like, whoa, my God. It's incredible. Where does God up. go when the something? Yeah. Something. I, I heard Burton Cummings. Sterile. I heard Burton Cummings do a hilarious thing. It was he did. Great. He did an impression. You know, he just had such a great voice, Burton. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But anyways, he did a. He just ragged on, uh, on, on Gordon Lightfoot. And then he did an impression of Gordon Lightfoot doing <laughs> Maggie May. Oh really? He's like, uh, <laughs> how does Maggie May go again? Uh, okay. How's what's the line in Maggie? What's one line in Maggie May? Uh, uh, hey there, Maggie, I wish I had something to say to you. Yeah, you say it's late September. Hey there, Maggie, I wish I had something to say to hey you. Yeah. It's late hey September. You. So it's like super non-sexy. And <laughs> Don't worry about this. Just keep your... Oh, I get my coffee? Yeah, Maybe I... Take this Oh, home. this is all right? Okay. You can... All right, buddy. All right. We're fine. <laughs> so I am. I'm just. I'm just. Just hold on your that. record. <laughs> no, you're actually promoting an I promote old Anne Murray record. <laughs> <laughs> Sales have been dropping a little. Okay. She's beautiful though. Yeah. Didn't she do a duet with Kenny Rogers? Did she do a duet with I Kenny Rogers? I don't know that one. I can't remember. She did a duet with someone. She's got a good head of hair though. Yeah. Does she ever? Huh. She's a handsome woman. Handsome woman, good golfer. <laughs> she's a handsome she's golfer. She's a good golfer. She's like a scratch golfer, apparently. <laughs> My friend was at, uh, she's a girl, and uh, she was at David, Ge- uh, some, yeah, whatever, some guy's house. <laughs> so anyways, the guy is a secret gay guy, and then the woman is a secret uh, woman like her. Like a lesbian. A les- lesbian. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A secret woman. <laughs> she's a lesbian. Yes, yes. I should be wearing this. this is rid- yeah, you don't have to wear that. But it's no, it's ridiculous. But we it, it did enjoy ridiculous. it on the herd. We did enjoy it. So Good. she, uh, wait, what was I talking about? Oh, the secret, the secret lesbian. Like oh yeah, so my friend was there, right? And uh, the, the the wife <laughs> goes up to her, and she says, um, "Do you watch the uh, LPGA? Do you follow the LPGA?" <laughs> Which apparently is some code. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So my friend, this girl, she goes, oh, sometimes, you know. <laughs> and then the girl's like, oh, it's really you know, something that you should really follow. <laughs> Very entertaining. <laughs> All right, we're going to do it. it. We're going to get going. Wait, 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 wait. I got to, God damn, man. It's like I was saying on Saturday Night Live, you know, they've done it for 30 years and everything's a panic. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, 10 TV. seconds of screaming. You're like, fuck, <laughs> you don't have everything ready yet? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, here we go. Had 40 years to get this right. <laughs> <laughs> They're still trying. Hey, no, our McDonald's here. Oh, yes, baby. We yeah. just started. Uh, Fox Sports Live TV. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody's is, coming. Everybody's coming. This is the place to this go. This is the place to be. Well, Norm, we've yeah, never really... This, you know? A little scratch. Yeah, <laughs> a little we, scratch. We, we had to, to give you a little in, money. You don't have to live in Bristol. That's right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this is a great show, and uh, you guys are awesome. And... Uh, from Saskatchewan? Yeah, we're both from Saskatchewan. No, we're <laughs> no, Wait, no, what? No, he's, he's from Alberta. I'm from Ontario. Oh, I don't know why I heard that. Yeah. But I, but I love I that in the book you start. Where in Alberta? In, uh, from Athabasca near Edmonton. Oh, I know Athabasca, yeah. yeah. That's where and, the tar sands Well, it, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. you know what's funny? You start the book in Edmonton. In the book, yes. That's right. <laughs> in Edmonton, Alberta in a hotel room. And then you finish the book. In uh, Saskatchewan. <laughs> you finished. Uh, I don't know where I finished. I can't remember. No, you finished the book I've by saying. I've never read the book. <laughs> No, you say this. I can't. You know, I perform thousands it. of hours from a small club in Ottawa, Ontario, to a small club in Edmonton, Alberta. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know when things come, they say they come full circle. Full like circle. that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's a horrible it's not, thing. That's a bad <laughs> no, thing. No, you want to, you want to get to the top, and then you don't want to drop. Yeah, you don't want to go back down. You don't want to go back hey. down. It's called based on a true story. Based on a, a true memoir. story, a memoir. Because it's my contention. Were you gonna ask me why it's called Based on a True Story? No, I was gonna ask you why I write a book. It seems like a oh. seems like it's a pain. Oh, it's it's a, he's hellish. written two. Hellish. You've written two books? Yeah, it's work. God, it's hellish. Yeah. yeah. 
really hellish and uh, uh, so many words and like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't want to write, you don't want to overwrite. So, you uh, you know, uh, but um, what you are too both. Yeah. But you, but you said you didn't, you didn't want to write a straightforward memoir because I didn't have enough. You, you didn't have enough at, at life experience. No. You're just eating all day. Yes. I, <laughs> I try to find food and you know, I, I try to take care of my son and, uh, you know, all those things that are, are just dull as dishwater. You didn't feel you, like that was going to fill up 75,000 words. That's so many words. Oh, right? They want so many words. So many, so many words. Did you have like a, uh, right, did okay. you hit, try to hit a word count every day? That's what I did. I tried to hit a word count. Oh, that's count. a great idea. Yeah. Yeah. To, to split it up so you don't, because 75,000 is too big a, a number. Yeah. So if you go, well, you know, 500, I could do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like if you exercise. Yeah. You go out and run. Don't go out and run for an hour. Go out and run for a minute, one yeah. minute. Yeah. And then you'll probably do more than one minute. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Then you'll you'll overachieve. You're, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since he's written two people say, well, two when am books. I going to put What are you going to write a book? No, yeah. I say I'm going to put out a pamphlet. It's much easier. <laughs> a pamphlet? Yeah. <laughs> and then just be on the street corner. <laughs> right. Like the guys in Vegas handing out the... Oh, yeah. The, the, you want a whore? You know, you're like, I'm, with, <laughs> I'm with my wife. <laughs> You know what I love in Vegas? They have a Hooters. Yeah, like, right in the strip. Hotel and casino. Yeah. yeah, but every other casino, the girls are w dressed way more yeah, provocatively. Uh, provocatively. Yeah. And Hooters is a kind of old-fashioned. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why anyone would go to Hooters. Also, I was at the Orleans Hotel, mm. which is off the strip. And right. And it's kind of dowdy and, you know. What were you doing there? I was doing a comedy show. Yeah. <laughs> so, because uh, I, you know, I don't, I'm not good enough for the strip. Right. But anyways... The people that were in the, uh, it was very interesting, the people that were in the Orleans staying there were only a block away from the Bellagio and the, and the Mirage and, you know, but they never went there. Like, it's like they felt they couldn't or something. Right, they, that they weren't allowed. They weren't allowed. It was allowed. like a, a club they weren't allowed into. That's what they thought, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. about everything in life, you know what I mean? You just walk in the door, you just, you know. And, and then people just accept you. Just you're like there. Here. All of a sudden, you're there. Just like here. You're just like <laughs> exactly. I just got back from Vegas. I lost my phone. You bet your phone? No, I lost. I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those Western movies. This is all I have left. <laughs> uh, that could have happened. <laughs> Actually, Norm, at one point in the book, uh, you and Adam Egit, uh, your Adam assistant, uh, stop at uh, Whiskey Pete's. Whiskey Pete's. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. fried bread and, and molasses. Yes. You, because, uh, and I, because I've always wondered this, and that's why I put in the book, that when people drive from Los Angeles to Las Vegas, when you cross the border in a town called Prim, yeah. they have some roller coasters, and uh, not roller coasters, what, slides, water slides, and three or four casinos and you go in there and the betting is very small you know like if you bet a hundred dollars i was like who's this guy you so, throw your phone down it's yeah scary <laughs> <laughs> so uh um i've always wondered if, if anyone ever went there thinking it was vegas and then you know coming back and going ah I sucked. Well, it's not as good as you think. Right, exactly. Because that's what you could easily think if you were a, a Well, well Dan Asian. did that when we first moved here. I've stayed at Whiskey Pete's. No, you haven't. Yes. <laughs> I've got the t-shirt. <laughs> what? Is that because your gambling need made you stop? Well, Vegas was another hour and it's three in the morning. Yeah. So yeah. I pulled into Whiskey Pete's. I said, do you have any rooms? And they're like, yes. <laughs> I said, we how have much? All the rooms. Yeah. <laughs> it's $29. What? Wow. Is that it? Yeah. It's Man, that deal. drive from Las Vegas. You know what I don't like about it? First of all, you're always, you know, behind some truck that's wavering and everything. But there's always like these black tire marks that, uh, you know, just go into the, the, the desert. Right. Yeah. And it's Someone so skidded scary. off yeah. into the desert or something. So I stopped, like, as I got the turbulence is also bad if you take an airplane. So <laughs> I took an airplane, I got scared. I said, I'll just drive, but I mean, uh, I can't drive, but I'll ride with a guy. <laughs> and uh, it was way more scary. But that's a dull uh, goddamn story. <laughs> but it <laughs> as I was saying it, I'm like, why am I saying this? <laughs> whiskey oh, whiskey Pete, Pete's, yeah. Whiskey Pete. So if you see the picture of him, yeah. hopefully we can put up. Whiskey Pete? Yeah, He's not itself. open a casino. He's not what? He's not opening a casino. There's no real Whiskey Pete. There isn't? There, but there there's a picture be. of him? Yeah. Is he an actor? He's this 
Well, he's this guy leaning against a post with his hat down. Oh. That guy doesn't have the, the means to open a casino. No risky fee. <laughs> When is the, by the way, when is the Beverly Hillbillies Casino going to open yeah, finally? Yeah, that's a good question. Haven't we heard about that for years, the Max Bear? And then you have the pool Who in would the think back. He would, and... he would be the guy yeah, that became I don't know. popular and, and maybe, super rich. Maybe it'll be out in Prim. Yeah. So are you addicted to gambling? I wouldn't call it an addiction. I just like it a lot. <laughs> it, you've mentioned that you've had some issues with gambling yeah, in the past. I had a, a bit. My friend who was very smart said, I've been very lucky with gambling. I never won. Right. And uh, that was that's, also in the book. By the I way. threw that in the book, yeah. yeah. But uh, it's true. You never, uh, um, if like, you win, if you win big, you won big early watch out. and it hooked you. Yeah. yeah. Not early, but about a year into it. I was just a casual guy. Then I won huge by fluke. And then I had all this money and then I could, couldn't go back to the, the, the small. You know, I, I don't think, I don't think I ever cashed a chip. Really? I don't think so. I think I always kept them. To Where are they? More. Well, I would keep them in, in Las Vegas. I would keep them in a, you know, you can rent out little, whatever you call them, safe, safe deposit boxes. Or that's where Dan's stuff. phone is right now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you play craps? Do you play craps? Yeah, that's what, uh -oh. that was, that's what many say that was the ruin of me. Oh, oh Dan what craps. a game, though. Oh, it's so exciting. Dan loves it. I had a 45-minute roll the other day. Wow. <laughs> And then lost it all. Can we, Norm? Can but, I ask you know, it's this? funny about craps. Like you're winning, nope. everything's. You got money everywhere, and oh. they keep giving you money. And then somebody rolls a seven, and they take it all out, and you're like, "Wait, what?" And then you're what, counting. You're having so much fun. <laughs> you're like, "I thought I was way up." But... <laughs> we're having such a good time. But, but it's true. Forty-five minute run. But then if you play blackjack, you can only have like a five uh, card. You, yeah, know, you run. lose play long. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. awful. It's more social too. You're around the table. Oh, yeah. Everyone's having fun. Wait, which is this? The, the craps. craps yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah, everybody's excited. Blackjack. Everyone's like, "Don't play that." The only thing is, I hate when guys like take forever. I'm like, "Come on, man. Come on, God." You gotta set the I, dice. I need to though. see a number. Yeah, so, do you set the dice? It does. It takes me ten seconds. <laughs> You're I just not like I, I line I went, up a pair and then throw because I bet all the hard ways. Oh, you do. Yeah. Oh, I see. So you just put the four four. In exactly. It, so. so I went to this guy's house to learn how to beat craps. How to beat craps? Yeah, and it was uh, the guy's name was Stanford Wong, who who uh, was a, it was an exceptional. No, he was an <laughs> exceptional uh, card counter who uh, you know was in the Griffin book and couldn't play anywhere in Vegas, but he was the best there was. So when people heard that he figured out how to beat craps, you know, they were, they all came. So I went, you gotta pay a thousand dollars to the guy. And he'll so, teach you how to roll uh, a seven. And? So, well, well, anyway, he, he goes like this, right? And he's like, and it goes and it's a four. <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, okay, that's what happened. I slid my thumb on the, uh, <laughs> like he tells you how the mistake happened. So then one out of every six times, he rolls a seven. And then you're all excited. You're like, oh, he's like, well, that's I, how. I did it. He goes, you try, you know, so you try a few times and then a seven comes up, you know, um, and, and uh, <laughs> it didn't, you know, it wouldn't work. And then he, he, he had this other thing for the thousand dollars you get, he takes you to a casino with these other rubes. <laughs> And you play it's crap. A field trip. Yeah, a field trip. <laughs> and so I said I quit at that point. I, I didn't want to go to the. Uh... But there is a thing in Las Vegas. You can go. I don't know if this still exists. But for twenty five thousand dollars, which a lot of people have, yeah, you can go and hang out with Michael Jordan and play a basketball with him. What? Isn't that the most amazing thing? Why are we doing that right now? And then uh, and then go gamble with him because he doesn't want to play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, he's like. <laughs> He loves to. Well, you had a phenomenal. You love golf. We know. Oh that. God, golf yesterday. Oh, what golf. a day! So we have to talk about this. So you, you had a phenomenal call on the FedEx Cup yesterday. Here's your tweet. I'd say Dustin Johnson should win. There are a few scenarios that would keep the cup out of his hands. I think he won't win. My pick is Rory. Roll the clip, guys. Roll the clip. Just crushing it. Rory Northern at times. Ireland. Rory has found the reason Rory will be. Oh, that that's that shot. Did that bounce uh, off the bunker? Look, the edge like it. the edge. Yeah. Oh, I couldn't see it. I kept trying to look. Oh, nice. at it. And they kept pointing out like he's this putt is worth about worth not, eleven not, and a half. Eleven and a half million. million. Yeah, right, he right. yeah. And he was putting fast. I'd be my, literally my pants. It'd be running down my leg. You're. 
I don't even know where to I mean, go. I know, I know what it means. <laughs> if a putt was worth that yeah, much, yeah, yeah. it's coming out. The reason I knew Rory would win yep. was because Rory, I saw it when he won the Irish Open, um, with par fives, Rory will always have an eagle putt. Very often, a very makeable eagle putt. Always on in two. Yeah. Yeah. And he and he hits it like like Arnold Palmer, which yeah. was so strange that Arnold Palmer died maybe while he was why who knows? Uh but uh, but but it was great to see because Rory is like Tiger in the sense that when he gets emotional he gets better. Yeah. Whereas most golfers you're supposed to forget like yeah. what just happened. But you know, if Tiger got a, a birdie, he, I mean a bogey, he'd be incensed. Yeah. And then he'd get two birdies in a row. See, this is good analysis. And we want to talk to you when we come back after the break about maybe coming to work here for us at, at FS1. Oh, my panel. God. After the US break. Open. Yeah. yeah, we the got US the US Open, Open. Coming That's up? all we have. But we've got that. Oh. We got the oh, 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 you guys are showing it on Fox. Yeah. 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 We'll be back. You know, I watched, uh, there was a funny thing with, uh, they had Greg Norman the first year. Yes, they yeah. did. It's so terrible. So <laughs> Jason Day had vertigo. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, like, uh, uh, Greg Norman starts talking about vertigo, but clearly he's reading Wikipedia. Right. And it's going on way too long. <laughs> right. Uh, it's just so awful. And, and they uh, didn't have a camera follow Jason Day. I know. It was uh, terrible. You know, I tweeted to uh, when Dustin Johnson was penalized. And mm -hmm. may have may have been a stroke difference, you know. Everyone was saying, well, Dustin, you know, they have to tell Dustin. So they went and told Dustin, the <laughs> official. So I tweeted, well, they have to ask everybody, not just Dustin. They have to yeah. tell everybody that's in contention yeah. that this thing is happening. Um, so I tweeted it, and, and then I decided to tweet Joe Buck um, at Buck. personally. At, yeah. at Buck. <laughs> <laughs> so I tweeted at Buck, and I said, what? well, you know, shouldn't the other people... Uh, shouldn't the other golfers be uh, told also? Five seconds later, he's like, you know what, I just, uh, that just occurred to me and my brain. Oh, independently. stole it from you. <laughs> stole that piece of so then he said, you. So then I said, what was that? You know, and then he sent me another thing like, oh man, I'm so sorry. Like it was just, you know, I, I swear I never saw it. it was just, wow, uh, very Brian Williams of it. <laughs> <laughs> I understand okay, Brian go. Williams. Yeah, do you? Oh, yeah. let's talk about that. Okay, we're back. <laughs> okay, here we go. And we're back. And we're going to plead with Norm to come work with us at FS1 as a golf analyst. You oh. talk about this all the time. That would be my dream job. Yeah. Yeah. Have you talked to networks about potentially doing that? No, I haven't. But I, I think like since so few people understand the game or follow it with uh, as much passion as I do, that I'd be, I'd be good, you know. Why they not? probably want me to be a funny guy, but you know I could do that also. But, but I, I love to, like if I could call a, a golf game, that would be the best ever. I mean, we have the U.S. Open, and then we have the four ball. Uh huh. Right. No one's really watching the four ball, so maybe well. we can start with that. <laughs> <laughs> you cut your teeth there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, there. but that would be harder. Yeah. It's maybe. like it's like when uh, when um, Dennis Miller did Monday Night Football. Oh yeah. And uh, they had him do color. Now, play-by-play -play is what he should have been doing. But, of course, you know, you, you got Al Michaels. You got, you know, real good. But play-by-play -play is the easy one. Uh, color is incredibly difficult. Right. Because, uh, you know, you, you usually have to be an ex-football player or know some know more stuff than, right. than Al Michaels does. Right. And, uh, and you shouldn't be mentioning Sylvia Plath. <laughs> <laughs> During a field goal. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but boy, that was, uh, I was envious of them. Uh, we wanted to get your thoughts on something. The Edmonton Oilers. Oh, yes. They have a, uh, a new mascot they that just, they revealed on Monday. They just revealed this mascot. This, oh, this is what terrifying. Is that? is that a lynx? <laughs> it's a lynx. Very good, Norm. It is a lynx. And um, its name is Hunter after the original owner of the Oilers, Bill Hunter. Bill they Hunter. couldn't name it after Peter Pocklington. He was a crook. Uh, but but they they're actually calling it the nightmare cat. 
Bobby that, D, our audio guy, he had a great line. He said, that thing looks like it's wet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, so is that a real like a, this, a thing a that walks thing. around? They, yeah. They've never had a mascot before. So yeah. after all the all the focus groups and all the crowdsourcing, they decided on the nightmare cat. When I was a kid, when I was a kid in Montreal, they had a mascot. His name was Yuppie. Yeah, Yuppie. Hey, He's still around. Is he? He's the Wait, did you see the, not the Wash? Oh, he went to the Montreal Canadiens? Montreal Canadiens, oh. yeah, yeah. So I saw Yuppie once. <laughs> he was there holding a child. There was a person was taking a picture of him, and Yuppie drops the child. <laughs> what? And just let, slips it through, a little child. And he, but he has huge feet. <laughs> so the, the boy, like, rickish, oh, you know, bounced. Kind of bounced off his feet and was uninjured. But everyone was concerned, but Yuppie had this big smile. <laughs> Like, he can't change expressions. Yeah. So he looked like he was real happy that this kid had fallen. <laughs> Have you ever seen the, uh, the Bonhomme de Carnaval? Yeah, Bonhomme de Neige. Oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> right? Every year I would see that, yeah. That, that's, uh, that's a carnival uh, in Because I, I, I lived in Quebec City. The stuff yeah. of nightmare. How that one. terrifying was Bonhomme de Neige? Yeah, no, it was very terrifying. <laughs> As a kid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a strange-looking creature, <laughs> to be sure. I remember, I mean, that was a long time ago. But I remember, didn't they have a, a song too? I, th I think they Val, did. Oh, like that. We didn't learn it in Alberta. In, in Alberta, yeah. <laughs> I guess you guys hated the East. I know? think so. I didn't yeah. know any better. I was just um, cheering for Gretzky. Was the was was when you were there? Was the when you were young? Was the um, who was the famous premier? Oh, Lockheed. Lockheed uh, Peter, Peter Lockheed. Lockheed. Yeah. yeah, was he there? Yep. And he told the the East they could freeze in the dark. That's right, because they didn't want to give up their oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's got, right. They got oil. The, and then the other famous premier from there, I'm sorry about all the Canada talk, uh, Ralph Klein saw uh, a homeless man once uh, on the street and said, why don't you go get a job? Oh, he also didn't, yeah. he also didn't graduate high school. Why you get a job? <laughs> But he was a very popular premier. That's like, been Canada Like, like uh, 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 homeless guys are, are you know, uh, are good, you know, like, hey, I hear they're hiring guys who, you know, piss in their own pants and, <laughs> you know, yell about Pierre Trudeau all day at the top of their lungs. And, uh, you'd be perfect. That guy's exactly what we're looking for. <laughs> the kind of guys that uh, Adam Egit would... Uh, <laughs> Would service under yeah. the Queensboro Bridge. Yeah, the Queensboro Bridge. $15 a man. $15 a man. $15 a man. Um, <laughs> Norm, what's your foolproof advice for making it in show business? Meet Adam Sandler. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I it. like these quiz. Pop, <laughs> pop quiz. These questions. Uh, you also reveal a unique pre-show ritual in the book. Could you share the pre-show? <laughs> oh, where I, where I relax? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I... I, I, I uh, in my head, I create a scenario where I'm lying on a glade with a golden lab and watching the fish jump in and out of the water and maybe, you know, throwing a line in and trying to try to fool one of them with a piece of floating feather. <laughs> and, uh, and then I work on my body, you know, that relaxes my mind. And I work on my body and, you know, because I, I hold most of my stress uh, in my groin. <laughs> That's what a masseuse told me once. <laughs> <laughs> and so I do that. And then finally, for my soul, I, 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 um, well, I, don't, I don't want to tell you what I do for my soul, but <laughs> then I punch my manager really hard in the stomach. Because <laughs> he's, you know, I don't, I don't like my, you know, my, your manager in show business, they just show up when you get something. And they're like, yeah. you're at the Tonight Show or something. They're like, can I do anything? I go, we're at the Tonight Show. Like, can you do anything? <laughs> yeah, like they just show up at that point. Yeah. Otherwise, they're hard to get a hold of. And my guy, uh, he, all he does is eat. <laughs> so, like, one time I caught him and he was eating all the chocolates from my gift basket. And then he turned around like this and it was like chocolate. Or, you know. <laughs> is he still your manager now? No, no. I went to B Bombastic Bushkin. <laughs> <laughs> The guy who used to manage Johnny Carson. <laughs> yeah. I know. When I was a kid, I heard the name. We didn't really get the Tonight Show in Canada, right? Well, we did. We but, did? But, um, but kind of... I don't remember it. Yeah, I, I remember it. But I mean, only on the American channels, as yeah. we call them, the American channels. But it's funny how in every part of Canada, you, you, like in Toronto, you cheer for the Buffalo Bills, and then in my yeah. part of Canada, you cheer for Seattle, because you get those American channels from Seattle, mm -hmm. American channels. Right, right, right. right? And you don't want to... I mean, some people, I guess, just watch Canadian football. 
Like when I was young, there was eight teams. Six made it to the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> That's still how it is. And two of them are named the Rough, Rough Riders. Riders. And no one can answer the question, like how that ca came to be. Yeah, no. And I the ask Rough everyone. Riders spelled, one is spelled <laughs> all one word, and one is spelled Rough Oh, Rider. wow. Yeah. And it's an American Express, Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, I don't Rough know. Riders. But how on earth did Eight that happen? teams and two of them were named Rough Riders. And when they played each other, especially on radio, <laughs> It'd be the Rough Riders are in trouble, the Rough Riders are at the six-yard line, this is not good news for the Rough Riders. You're like, well, what? What's going on? It's very confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's very but they always said Canadians just know. Yeah, they just yeah, know. yeah, yeah. yeah they Canadians know. for Americans. You know, it was always like, remember they'd go like, ah, oh, Americans, we know everything about America, yeah. but they know nothing about us. Yeah. And then you go, why would they? Like, yeah. why on earth would they want to know anything about us? Mm -hmm. I don't even want to know about us. Yeah. Like... You know what I mean? Well, you say in the book, Ig, you're a Canadian citizen. Um, Canada is the country that shaped me, taught me right from wrong. Also, the American citizenship test is way, way too hard. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> is that true? You say you've, you've taken it, it six it? times in the book. Yeah, is that uh, an exaggeration? No, that's an exaggeration. Okay. I took it once. But I couldn't believe I failed. I didn't, like, uh, study or anything. Do you have to know, like, all yeah. the presidents? Yeah, what are the questions? Uh, you have to know the Pledge of Allegiance. No yeah, idea. No, I'm, I'm out. Would you know that? I'm out. Yeah, I'm done. I have no idea. No clue. But that's a very important thing, because in America the flag is very important. In Canada, you know, it's a leaf. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in America's thirteen, you know, colonies, fifty stars. Ours, we just a sort leaf. of picked it out of a contest. Yeah. Like, oh, that looks good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like the Toronto Blue Jays. I remember. I think that was an actual contest, but. You know, you never see a blue jay in Toronto. It's like, <laughs> it's like the naming of their stadium. That was a contest. Skydome. Yeah. Oh, is that a contest, too? Yeah. Everything in Canada Everything is, is a contest. contest. <laughs> Everything in our country was a contest. <laughs> but I, you know what? I couldn't tell with the, with the uh, Canadian football. I couldn't tell if they were any good because they were just playing each other. You know? Right. I'm like, okay. well, they're not in America, so how good can they be? But then some of them, like Warren Moon, was obviously really good. Right. And... Uh, you know, who knows what his, uh, what his stats would be if he played in America oh his entire God. career. Oh. He would be ahead of Hall everybody. Hall of Famer anyway. Doug Flutie. Yeah. It would have been incredible. And Doug Flutie, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, uh, yeah. I was in Ottawa at the time, and we had Heisman uh, Trophy winner um, Tommy Clemens. <laughs> yeah, Tom yeah. Clemens, yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. Uh, no, wait. <laughs> This is the most the CFL has ever been. Yeah, yeah, a lot of CFL American play here. <laughs> um, so you mentioned, Norm, on Twitter last night, you were a little frustrated. A lot of journalists out on the East Coast weren't getting, they were just focusing on the facts. They weren't getting the truth of the books. So oh, just, yes, yes. Right? Right. I was, I was. You're a little frustrated. The questions were very frustrating because, right. yeah. Because so I, give so us an example. I, what were the questions? So you're like? saying that you didn't well, get Weekend Update because of Lorne Michaels' quote, hopeless addiction to liquid morphine? <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't say that. I'm not allowed to say that. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's I'm allowed to write. Yes, fictional yeah. story. All right. So right. I'm allowed to write it, but I'm not allowed to say it. Right. It's like members of parliament will say things, then they walk out and they can't say it. Like they can say it within the confines of <laughs> again, I'm again. This is Canada. all Canada, <laughs> but they can say it in the confines of question period. Right. But then when they walk out, the, the journalist goes, can you say what you just said? And they're like, no. When you think about it, the fact that question, just question period alone, just that phrase is yeah. fascinating. It is, yeah. I think it's a part of our political Matt, process. So you have to be really good, you know, and smart to be just, you know, bombarded by questions from the opposition, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Compared to here in America, where you're just a guy in a house. You just hide. You just, just hide yeah, in the back. Golf. You golf. <laughs> and, you know, listen. I read a thing about uh, in Golf Digest about Jack Nicholas and uh, who was it? Jack Nicholas, um, Bill Clinton, and um, and uh, someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could think of the third guy. I should have just made up. Let's a say guy. it's Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you know, and and uh, he always claims President Clinton that he's like a three handicap or something. Right. And I always wondered how he could do that because he's a president, like. So the, the way he does it is uh, he every hole he cheats. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, he's really burning up Jack Nicholas because, uh, you know, they'd have to wait for him. He'd be in the woods for five minutes, you know. 
when I found it, and then it'd be a different yeah, balls a different color. Right. You know? <laughs> right back on the fairway. I got a guy. I had a guy. I played. You know, they put me with this old guy, and he's like, uh, he would always just search for balls, and it would take forever. I go, come on, man, we got to play. And he, he was Greek. He had this accent, so he's in the woods, and I'm waiting. And he goes, hey, Norm, by the way, do you play Pinochle? I go, what? I don't know. <laughs> Why are you asking me if I play Pinochle, you know? He goes, that's good, man, Pinochle. You play Pinochle? I go, come on, we got to get going. And then he comes out with a ball. It's a pinnacle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been fun. This has been fun. Oh, this has been right, man. Feel All free of... to take anything from the Yeah, set. do you want to take any oh. Canadian? Do you want to take that Toronto record, North? <laughs> no, the real thing I would take would be the Steve Martin picture, but I, I don't think you would give that it's yours. away. I want you to have Really? It. Yep. Wow, that's, my, you, so that's my second Norm Steve McDonald, Martin everybody. Picture. Based on a true story, a memoir is out now. Steve Martin. You're almost yeah. on The Tonight Show. Oh, yes. <laughs> With Steve Martin and Elton John. Elton John, a hot piece of Yeah, he sure is. I walked by one time. <laughs> Remember the Hamburger Hamlet? Yeah, yeah. So I'm walking, you know, it was always filled with odd collections of celebrities, you know, like Debbie Gibson all the way up to Dean Martin. <laughs> and so I'm walking into the bathroom, and there sits Neil Sedaka. So some of these celebrities just stop you in your tracks, you know? Yeah. Because uh, they're so famous. So uh, I was like, whoa, that's Neil Sedaka, you know? So I just stopped right in front of his desk. He was with his wife. So we're talking, you know? And then I go, where do you guys live? So his wife goes, oh, we live up in the hills. But Neil has a, a, a place in West Hollywood. And then Neil Sedaka goes. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Like, I'm, what does that mean? Yeah, I think it meant... That I could go and leave. Go hang out with Neil? Go to the West Hollywood for a while in that apartment while the, while the well, wife waited. Waited at, in the hills. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, I don't, know what, it, I don't know what it meant. I can't say what it meant. <laughs> I'm only telling you the transcript of what happened. <laughs> can, you, uh, can you do the face that Neil gave you one more time? <laughs> It was very sexy. <laughs> there you go. Norm MacDonald, finally. We've wanted to have him, have him on ever since we moved down here. I mentioned this on the Fox Sports Live podcast um, from Monday, that it, it was like a, it was an old friend coming in. Yeah, yeah, it felt very familiar, very, uh, it did. It felt like we'd known him for a long, long time. Long, long. We didn't even get to talk about Arnold Palmer with him. Yeah, uh, no, we didn't. We did talk about his predicting Rory McIlroy would win the FedEx Cup. Yeah. Uh, watched all that on Sunday. What a what a treat that was. You, want, you get home and watch that. Uh, watch no, on I, the sports book. No, in I, your room. Yeah, you really do it up in Vegas. Eh? <laughs> I didn't watch Japanese baseball this time. <laughs> uh, uh, are the pools still open? Uh, it, yeah, saw, they must be. Right. Yeah, I it's saw the pool. It looked enough. busy down there. Why didn't you go down? Maybe. Uh, Take your trousers off. I'm not going down to the pool by myself. I'm Why not? not? Be the creepy guy. Why not? You just sit there. I love seeing the guys though, when you're, you're uh, down on the gaming floor, and guys just walk through the casino in their bathing in their suits. bathing suits. I know. Nothing else. Just don't care. They don't give a shit. There's a lot of wobble, and then the girls do the same. They're just. I'm like, could someone chaperone that person because it's not going to end well. Yeah. A lot of things don't end well in Vegas. A lot of things. That's why you should only go to Whiskey Pete's. And then when I landed back in LA, I had to sit on the tarmac for an hour. The flight was early, and then we had to get off old school. We had to get outside. Hashtag first world problems. <laughs> They're like, there's nowhere for us to park, so we gotta get out here. <laughs> that is weird. What is happening at LAX? There's a lot of confusion there right now. It's, it's horrible getting in and Ever out. since they let the Uber drivers go in. That's when it all started, that's my theory. <laughs> you go into Toronto, Pearson, you never hit any traffic. Like, it's a well-oiled machine there. I will say this, though, and this is much like the Air Canada domestic lounge in Toronto. My brother-in-law was at the Air Canada lounge at LAX. He said, and again, I know this is a first-world problem. He said there's nothing but soup and, like, nachos. Yep. There's True. no food there. And, well, and baby carrots. Just baby carrots, tomato soup, and like some chips. And like there's chips and salsa. It's like maybe a sandwich, something. Uh, and the salsa. Is it that hard? 
The salsa is the worst salsa. It's ever. probably just they went got an old El Paso out of the fridge, dumped it in. No, I don't even think they did that. I think they got a can of crushed tomatoes and put it in with uh, two gallons of water, and then just put it. There's out. your salsa. <laughs> Have fun in first class. <laughs> it's like I didn't want salsa. Salsa. Anyway, uh, what a fun podcast. What a fun time with Norm. Pick up his book if you can. Based on a true story, a memoir. Norm McDonald. Who do we have on next week? Uh, yeah, who's on the uh, podcast next week, Ben? Any idea? We don't know yet. We don't know yet. It's a mystery. It's a mystery guest. Mystery guest. Maybe Shannon Sharp. Ooh, that would be maybe. good. Shannon Sharp. Maybe. All right, we'll work on Shannon Sharp. And, uh, I have uh, not met Shannon Sharp yet. I've not met Skip Bayless. I walked by him today. Uh, he you looked, walked by Skip. He looked through me. He <laughs> just because I when I ran into him, he came right up to me and said he was a big fan. Were you in a suit? No. Hmm. Because I, wa- I was walking in in my shorts and T-shirt and flip-flops. Maybe he didn't recognize you. I doubt he's watched this show. But he said he was a big fan of ours. Mm-hmm. Do you think he was just lying? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to ask him. Can we get Skip on? Let's get Skip on. We'll get his ben workout routine. very stressed out by that one. When, I, when no, we say, can we get Skip on? He had a wedgie. What? Do you wear, like, mankeys? Do you wear thongs? That actually doesn't surprise me 100%. Nothing surprised me about Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to the podcast. And if you find my phone, please return it.